Hello again, everybody. It's Scott Casper, Takedown Media. Our coverage of the sport continues as we go behind the scenes of the 2016 NWSA All-Star Classic. Today, we focus on 184 pounds. This is a battle that's set to take place in Cleveland. I think it's going to be a main event. It surely has main event status. Joining me today, one half of that 84-pound matchup, Gabe Dean, a two-time NCAA champ and a returning All-Star Classic champion in his own right. Gabe, welcome back. How are you? Uh, I'm doing good. Thanks for having me back. Pleasure to be here. Congratulations, first of all. You you actually have proved your medal uh, not only at the All-Star Classic, but within the NCAA as well. A two-time NCAA champ for Cornell. Let's talk about being that man, because you got, uh, let's face it, in, in the world of NCAA wrestling, Division One specifically, you are that guy. I mean... Uh, this is this is your weight class to to win again, but also to defend. Can you feel that? Uh, I mean, not, not really. I'm just kind of enjoying just wrestling and just the new competition that comes in and out every year. Uh, seems to always somebody everybody jumps around a little bit every year, and uh, I'm just looking forward to competing with some other fellow great competitors and en- enjoying this last ride that I have. So. You know, I know your your uh, opponent, Miles Martin, is also a returning NCAA champ. A couple years, you're a junior, but uh, the Cleveland State's uh, Wolstein Center is going to be a great place for people to watch the season kick off. That's one of the best things about the All-Star Classic for me is that that is the official start of the season. We have something that actually does that. And uh, like I said, I believe the main event will feature you and, uh, and Miles. Let's talk a little bit about how they notified you uh, did did they go to Rob Cole first? Or who? Yeah, yeah, they, they they always go to Coach Cole first, and then you know he lets me know, and he's like, hey, you know, is this something you want to do? And then you know we go from there. So now you're a senior and a three time All American, the incumbent champ at eighty four, uh, and you're known you're you're well known as a formidable Cornell Bruiser. <laughs> did you know that? <laughs> uh, I don't. Yeah, I guess I. Guess I um, <laughs> Yeah, I guess they they got some nicknames for me. Uh, I just kind of roll with it. <laughs> I like it. I like that. A Cornell Bruiser, formidable Cornell Bruiser. Mike uh, Mike Moyer said there aren't words to describe how excited they are to have such a match in Cleveland at the All Star Classic. What is um, what's your? T- you say you're just kind of relaxing and and uh, taking it, you know, like one day at a time. But I can't really accept that because I know how hard you work today. You and your brother were put through your paces by which coach? Uh, Co- coach Han. Uh, Damian Han. And I understand uh, he gets another uh, another buck to his credit. Is that true? Yeah, yeah, he does. He does. Tremendous hunter, Damian Han. Um, so Damian comes in. Do you guys talk about the All-Star Classic, or is it just practice as normal? It's just, yeah, just business as normal. Um, just going about, you know, our different areas, fine-tuning things, trying to get better um, in all areas. And, uh, you know, we just, uh, we're excited for the opportunity, and we think it's going to be a lot of fun. Um, Miles is obviously a great wrestler and uh, a great competitor, and I look forward to the matchup. So, This what we call Dean Martin matchup is the first matchup of returning NCAA champs at the All-Star since uh, Logan Steber. And uh, Kendrick Maple from Oklahoma tied tied it up, and uh, that was a six four victory for uh, for Logan Steber. I think that one was at George Mason, yeah, twenty fourteen uh, at at George Mason University. Let's talk about your style. You, and, and as much as you know, I might have a little chuckle at being a bruiser. You really have that kind of style. You come in heavy, and your wrestler, your opponent knows they've wrestled Gabe Dean. Where does that come from? Is that from the years of experience from your father as a coach and, and you know, growing up in a wrestling-rich area? Uh, I, I think it's like the, not like the biggest, the biggest guy. So uh, I just kind of, you know, kind of found my niche there and my that's where I kind of can get my edge and um, a lot of hand fighting and stuff like that. So... Um, credit to my coaches. They, they, they've developed me and, um, you know, it's the guys in the room every day that work with me that also, so, you know, credit to all, all them. What I like about you is that 
of your 77 and 3 mark over the last two years, 49 of those include bonus victories and 18 falls. So you don't stop wrestling just because you're ahead. You continue on forcing the pace, forcing that, and looking for that victory. But 18 clean finishes, but 49 bonus point victories. Is that something that, that Coach Cole uh, drills into you guys, or does it just come naturally to you and your style? I think – I think he, you know, Coach Cole is just like, hey, just you know, kind of go out there and wrestle as hard as you can. Damien's the same way. So is Mike Gray. So our coaching staff just kind of preaches like, go out there and keep attacking. This, that's what this sport needs. It needs guys to go out there and score points and put on a show, and uh, that's what draws the fans in. That what gets people excited, and uh, and that's the way our, that we try to go about our business here at Cornell. So, and also being really good on the mat is important. And I, I know Coach Cole is really big on that. So, uh, yeah, we just kind of we we know we know what people like, and uh, we try to put on the best show that we can. And um, credit to some other programs out there too. They 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 obviously do that as well. So, I'm looking forward to seeing you in Cleveland. But then I get to see you again in New York City at the. Uh, uh, grapple at the garden later on in the month of November. Oh yeah, Cornell has been one of the fixture schools for that event. Apparently, you guys like wrestling in New York. You must have liked it enough to win another NCAA championship. Doing so at the garden was that special for you? Yeah, I, it was. It was actually incredible. I uh, just, you know, you didn't really know what to expect it being in New York City and kind of a madhouse, but. The NCAA did a great job, and the people that put that up did a great job um, just making it very organized, easy access. And um, what made it most special was to be able to share that moment with uh, my, my family and my close friends in this program. And, uh, you know, it, I know it, was, it looks like it's just me out there wrestling, but um, there's a lot of other people out there with me that I wouldn't be out there without them. So. I'm just kind of I've been I've been lucky enough to be able to represent so many wonderful people and um, and that's just a true honor to me. So it was a, it was a very special time and moment. You know, and, and people that don't know you, I think I, I don't know that they'd be surprised, but perhaps uh, their eyes might be opened a little bit wider if they did understand the kind of person you are and the kind of person that your dad raised uh, to be a good person. And uh, some of your personal reflections uh, really have gotten my attention, how you treat other people, how you treat this, res this sport with so much respect and kindness. Uh, respect uh, is a big word when, when talking about wrestling. You don't take it for granted, do you? No, not at all. I, um, my, I've had a, a lot of diff a couple. My mom always tells me, uh, she, actually, she actually told me this morning, she's like, Every time someone's put in a position to be able to affect other people, they they should in some sort of sort of way, you know, should should help you know others with that power. So um, it's not that I have power, but I'm able to. I, I've been put in a position where I'm able to reach a certain number of people, and I just kind of wanted to keep preaching that. Hey, you know, it's easy to look at you know guys like you know these guys that have so many accolades and say, "Wow, I just want to be that." But at the end of the day, it's more important just to become a to really use wrestling to really help you become a better person, and it teaches you a lot, you know, just through a lot of things and adversity, and you know, someday you know you're gonna have a family, someday you're gonna have a wife, someday you're gonna have kids, and those are the things that are really the most important, not what you really actually accomplished on the mat. So, and I just kind of preach like wrestling helps you prepare for those big responsibilities in your life, and. Um, I, uh, that, that, that's, that's really what's most important to me. So it's been, I've been blessed, you know, to be able to accomplish some things during my career here, but, um, the things that matter to me the most during my time at Cornell are the relationships that I've built and the people that I've got to know. And then, um, I, and they, they've helped me prepare me to, you know, become a better person in those, when I take on those other responsibilities later in my life. So, and you see that as, as part of your giving back to the sport, being a, I can't remember which football player said it best. He said, I play football. I'm not a role model. And I think you see it differently, and I can appreciate that fact. Your father uh, was an NCAA runner-up uh, for the University of Minnesota back in 87. He's always been a real positive example for the sport. It must be where you get at least some of that from. Yeah, I mean, 
I can't I can't put into words how close I am to my dad and my mom and my brother and my sister. Um, were they you know credit to my parents they've they've created a culture in our family where we're all so close and um, every single one of them has helped me so much along the way. Uh, my dad always there for those tough times to get you know help me get through those adverse times and so with my mom. My brother's always my brother's my best friend, so he's always there to kind of, you know, make me laugh. And it's great having him out here now. And then my sister as well. I really just every day I wake up, I just really just feel so grateful, so blessed to just be in the position that I am and to be living this life that I am. It's it, it it's really just uh, it's it's humbling to be honest with you. I just I'm so lucky. I, and then be able to be part of this program and. The people in this program, it just, it's its unbelievable. I'm, I'm so lucky. All right, so your guard is down right now, okay? You're part <laughs> of that big red, part of the, 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 the whole family of all those guys that have wrestled before you and those that will follow you. Who is the red man? Uh, you got to open up that's, and let us know, dude. That's something I can't disclose. I can't disclose who the red man is. He, uh, <laughs> that's, a, that's, a, that's a trade. That's a, that's a, that's a secret. Um, but I will say that I'm very, very good friends with Red Man when he's not Red Man. I see. Okay, I see. he's one of he's actually one of my <laughs> one of my best friends that I've met, met at college. So it's actually kind of funny that you ask. Um, but I won't. I can't disclose that um, to the to the world. So <laughs> as close <laughs> as I am to the sport, I can never get anybody at Cornell to tell me who the Red Man is. Yeah. I'll break down that mystery, that wall of mystery, at some point. I I promise you that. Even it's kind though, of a trade secret, you know. About <laughs> most of the program, we kind of have a trade secret going on. So. <laughs> All right, man. So this is this is your opportunity to send out an invitation to all your friends, all your family, uh, the Cornell family as well. Uh, who, what do you want to tell them? To invite them to come see you wrestle. Uh, I just like to just you know my, I'm I'm from Michigan, so it's not too far from home. And uh, you know every time someone someone that I love and care about or know comes and watches me wrestle, I, I'm tr- truly grateful. And uh, I I hope that I hope that you know as many people that they want to come and see me wrestle a, a great opponent. So. I hope that people come out and uh, just know that I'm super grateful that they're there supporting me. Well, we couldn't be any more grateful to have you a part of it. The 2016 NWCA All-Star Classic presented by the Brewer Garrett Company takes place November 5th. Wolfstein Center, the campus of Cleveland State University. Bouts get underway at 6, main event to go off at 7. Tickets start at 15 bucks. $100 preferred seating with social as well. Group options are available. You can look for tickets at the Northeast Ohio Discount Drug Marts. Call the Wolfstein Center box office at 844 844- 407-2279. If you missed any of this information or if you'd like to see more of these interviews, go to GoAllStarClassic.com. Again, GoAllStarClassic.com. It'll be streamed live on TrackWrestling.com for a small price as well. But we're looking forward to seeing Gabe tie it up with Miles Martin. It's going to be an Ohio State. It'll be a classic battle, Ohio State versus Cornell. Gabe Dean has been our guest on the Nike Hot Seat today. Gabe, good to see you. We'll look forward to seeing you next week in Cleveland. Uh, it's great to be on, as always. I always appreciate your time, and uh, you guys do a great job. So thank you for having me, and I look forward to seeing you as well. Appreciate the kind words for all of us at Takedown. I'm Scott Casper, and thanks for watching 